But what I want to do is break down kind of this model and why we talk about radical healing versus what we hear a lot about coping, coping mechanisms. And so it's really talking about survival versus the thriving. So survival versus thriving. And so what I want to break down is just some of the systemic pieces, because when we talk about radical healing, why it's radical is because it's not a luxury. It's something we need, just like water to hydrate. We need to acknowledge that we need to take time for ourselves, but also understanding the systems that are operating around us and knowing where our power is. And so this particular model highlights particular areas you can see on your screen. And so I'll quickly go through this. And certainly if there's more dialogue after, feel free to reach out to us. But it really acknowledges the interlocking systems of oppression and hate. So if we look at institutional or systemic racism or other institutional or systemic oppression in any setting you may be in, um, whether it's at the more micro level or more larger levels, it's important for us to understand how that impacts us. So when we were talking about racial trauma, it's beyond just the notion of race or racial identity. It's the interconnection between and the, the relationship with the systems that we're operating in. And so it's understanding how privilege looks, it's understanding how power looks, who has authority and power to make decisions. Um, it's looking at all those facets. So if you work in an educational system, if you work in something that's like a clinic, wherever you may be, you are a part of that system, but it may impact you differently than someone else. So if a person of color, and if we look at some of our students of color, let's say if they're in a predominantly, let's say white Caucasian institution, their experience might look a bit different, um, where in other settings, it might be different where they can see themselves reflected in the community. And so critical consciousness means we're aware of those situations, much like when I said, when I started at the counseling center, I was very aware I was the only Latino psychologist there. I instantly felt some pressure internally that I needed to somehow meet the needs of the whole community on campus, which I knew realistically wasn't the case, but I felt it in my spirit. And I also knew that was part of the job description. And so I felt that I was gonna be carrying a bit more of that weight. And then also seeing where does it look like with my counterparts in terms of how we're operating together. Part of the critical consciousness is also understanding our identities and honoring identities. So me as a Latina was kind of constantly, well, okay, what does it mean to be a psychologist? But what does it mean to be me and who I am culturally and my authenticity? And so that's the piece about understanding our identities and what they mean to us and all our multiple identities. So if you are part of the LGBTQ um, community, if you identify as an undocumented student or undocumented person, if you are a person of color, uh, first gen, et cetera, understanding all your multiple identities make you who you are. So it's learning how to honor them and give them space. Strength and resistance, we've been talking about knowing your strengths, your internal gifts. Sometimes we tend to dim that light. We tend to kind of numb it down so we can fit in to what we feel the mold is. And what this particular model is saying is that we need to shine in these circumstances. But shining in those circumstances where we're feeling oppressed can be difficult. And so that's why we are talking about the emotional and social support, um, kind of creating community, knowing your community, find those people, those people that are your people. I say sometimes those are my people. Those are my people that get me, understand me. At the same time, we need to also feel inclusive of all spaces and creating that space. So radical hope is really radical because we don't want to lose hope for us to navigate. So to navigate a trial means we have to hold on to the authenticity of hope, that it's real, that it's there for us to take, but sometimes we need some support from other people to shine that light for us. So this is just reminding us back to the Audre Lorde quote, which I love that one, that self-care in particular is not self-indulgent. It is something that is we need, it's self-preservation, and it's something that she talks about, it's an act of political warfare. When you hear act of political warfare, that tells us how radical it really is. Because for our students that are doing a lot of social justice work or they're really out there, they need to come back and replenish and, and reheal to get back out there. So that's why it's so radical. Mm -hmm.